Oui. Merci, Monsieur le Président Thierry de Montbrel. Merci, Thomas. Merci, mes collègues en Marocain pour l'invitation. Et maintenant, je pense que je dois en switch to en English, puisque j'ai passé quelques jours ici. Bien sûr, je suis pratiqué français, mais il n'est pas tellement en bien à parler. Bon. Um, I had no intention to speak on uh, Ukrainian crisis and Russia's foreign policy because uh, we talked with Toma that it would be good just to cover uh, more, let's say, peaceful and general issues, though I guess I should respond. I, uh, I completely agree with what Ambassador uh, Maria said on the Ukrainian crisis. And I, I want even to stress that Ukrainian crisis, uh, to my mind, it should be one of the main issues for Russia's foreign policy for next uh, foreseeable future, because the Ukrainian crisis brought us to nowadays relations with the Western world. It's, uh, to the greatest extent, ruined uh, the heritage of the previous uh, President Putin presidentships. Uh, and to the greatest extent, it's Ukrainian crisis brought us to Syria uh, on a kind of, without with absolutely technical reasons, with absolutely technical uh, vision of what's happening in the Middle East, and then it's happened to be really strategic involvement. And this strategic involvement in the Middle East happened at, uh, when we have really bad relations, institutional relations, and very often political relations with a major place in the Middle East. So this mixture of the two crises plus spoilations with those who were considered previously as main partners of Russia on the world scene really creates a, a tremendous problem for Russia's foreign policy. But the key crisis and the key issue and the key decision is, to my mind, in Ukraine. And uh, Ukrainian crisis, from our point of view, should not be underestimated. As, to my mind, it sometimes happens. It's not Kyrgyzstan's crisis of fun. It's not a frozen conflict, as Ambassador Morel said. Unfortunately, it's a conflict that goes on. Probably it's a low intensity conflict. Uh, we somehow got used to this conflict. Europe got used to the conflict. Even Ukraine got used to this conflict. But this conflict should be settled. And uh, I guess it's uh, one of the main tasks for the Russia's foreign policy. Now here I speak absolutely unofficially, uh, in spite I'm associated with the university uh, that deals uh, in one uh, puzzle with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Here I return uh, to what I wanted to uh, say, uh, because uh, the whole conference uh, brought me to the idea uh, which somehow <clears throat> knocked my mind uh, previously, that really our world nowadays uh, tends to be, let's say, world without great ideas, without great trends. There is no this grand line as uh, we had, let's say, in the 1990s, at the end of 1980s, at the beginning of the years 2000. It's less global world, but driven by in-country process. And this in-country process, somehow they overflow national borders and they went to the uh, global scene. Look at Trump, look at Brexit, look at Saudi Arabia changes, look at uh, Iran, uh, very strange developments, look at Russia's and Turkey's foreign policy that both range from kind of autarky to interventionism. It's purely national phenomena, absolutely. But the phenomena somehow that goes on international scene but it's not a kind of one global trend. It's not one global tendency. And I guess this should bring us to more close, more attentive area country studies. And I, I guess this uh, period should last rather long. It's kind of international decadence, if you like. But decadence doesn't mean something bad. It means that we have really very mosaic world, very diversified, uh, very small tendencies. Probably through these small tendencies, we could grasp some kind of general pattern. But we could live also without such a pattern as we lived or our predecessors lived in the world of the second half of 19th century or the uh, last 
25 years of the 19th century, or as they lived in uh, 1920s. It, it, it was a kind of development. It was a progress, but probably not as strong, not as dynamic, not as somehow homogeneous as we got used to have in uh, 1980s, 1990s, in post-Second World War period, and we should get used to uh, this kind of uh, world. It uh, brings more attention, as once again, to uh, the in-country process. And even economic growth shows that uh, it's kind of Plato-style economic growth. Economists, they climb somehow to the Plato, and then they rather mildly slide down, then they go again to the Plato, then slide down. There is no any more such growth as it was in the uh, 1990s with dot coms. There are no oil prices as main engines for the world economy. There, are, there is no any more such strongly growing China as it was even 10 years ago. So it's a kind of world of a more modest tendencies, more modest trends, and that is why it's, it's not so easy to grasp what's, what, 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 what's happening in, in, uh, in this world. But at the same time, there are some multilateral and global challenges. It's not to ruin under contemporary circumstances multilateralism. As it happens, as it happens when those who are, let us say, grassroots brought by democracy to the very top of their countries, here I don't mean personalities, I mean, let us say, grassroots tendencies, because Brexit, for example, it's not about personality, it's about trends brought from the very bottom, trends very unclear, it's rather about psychological moods in the British society than somehow then were converted to the political will that could destroy your part of Europe or could change strongly your, uh, your part of Europe here. I uh, uh, distinguish between two parts of Europe because we live in a slightly different world. But, and, and it's uh, our must not to ruin what we need in, the mul in multilateralism, because multilateralism usually built and multilateral regu regulations, overall, overwhelming, whatever, relations, they build by great tendencies, by great changes, as it happened under, after Second World War, as it happened after the end of the uh, Cold War, as it happened at uh, the beginning of this new era of the 1990s. Otherwise, with multilateralism ruined, the world could be simply a bunch of provincial or provincialized countries, those who go to, let us say, local, regional conflicting, those who go to local, regional, and sometimes, if they're strong enough, worldwide trade wars on the very specific issues. But this kind of things that are things which really harm what we mentioned here from the very beginning, harm every day's life of our people. And unfortunately, returning back at the end to uh, my country, this kind of crisis, is, as uh, they were here, they brought us very often to this narrow vision, the provincial vision, which fortunately, 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 because we are not alone in this sometimes provisional vision, and unfortunately because too many countries nowadays are having to be provincial in in a, in a global, strategically global world. What, that is all what I wanted to say now, then I, I can answer your questions, provocative ones. Thank you very much.